The Paris Agreement is a global agreement to hold temperature increases to well below 2 degrees and aiming for 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. Shipping is not part of the Paris Agreement. There's 90,000 ships in the shipping industry and in 2012 the emissions from the industry were around 800 million tons of CO2 which accounts for around 2.2% of the global anthropogenic CO2 emissions. The sooner we start acting on decarbonisation of shipping, the less painful it will be. Reducing emissions by 70% by 2050, as is necessary to match the two degree ambition of the Paris Agreement, is actually possible. To do this, uh, it's just necessary to install a host of energy efficiency measures on ships. It's uh, necessary to improve the operational efficiency of ships through the installation of things like performance monitoring software. And then finally, to build out the low carbon fuel infrastructure uh, across the world. Every type of business across the maritime ecosystem has a role to play in decarbonization. What we're going to see change over the next few years is that carbon will become a competitive issue for every type of business. So, if you're in a maritime business, it's in your interest and it's also in the interest of your shareholders to make sure that you start thinking about these issues today. One group that needs to take action are the ship owners, the operators, the charterers. What they fundamentally need to do is to collaborate to make sure that operational efficiency is uh, as good as possible. One thing that could be done to make sure this happens is uh, the installation of performance monitoring software. Secondly, ship owners, chargers and financiers can work to collaborate on the installation of energy efficiency technologies. This can be done actually with multiple technologies um, in what we call deep energy efficiency retrofits. This is possible even before a carbon price or, or some carbon mechanism hits the industry in the 2020s. Um, this can be done through collaboration. So in a contractual agreement, owners and charters can just split the fuel savings that they know they'll receive through the installation of these technologies. Once they have that agreement in place, they can go to the financier and get the necessary capital to install the kit on the ships. All types of cargo owners, whether they are companies that move their uh, products in containers on big container ships, or whether they are companies that move incredible amounts of bulk goods like grain or ore or other, other goods in massive bulk ships. Um, regardless of what they move, what we expect them to do is to first understand their carbon footprint, second disclose it publicly, and then thirdly um, disclose their management plan. We would expect that this management plan be in line with the science-based target. Financiers play a really key role in decarbonization as well because they have a very serious financial interest in making sure that the ships are built in a way that's compatible and supports decarbonization. In fact, we think their role is so important, we've made another video about it. Fundamentally, the shipping industry as a whole needs to own its own decarbonization pathway. It needs to make long-term investments in that pathway and it needs to be honest about those investments as well. A recent example of this latter point is um, the investments that are being made in LNG over the past year or two, so 2017 into 2018. LNG investments are being made for many reasons, but one of the reasons is um, it's being positioned as a decarbonization transition fuel. Unfortunately, the numbers do not support this at all. When used in maritime transport and once you take account for the life cycle emissions of LNG, there's little to no benefit of using LNG in seaborne transport from a greenhouse gas perspective. So what this risk is doing is locking us into a high carbon infrastructure that is fundamentally incompatible with the decarbonization that shipping needs.